Hi, I'm Kruno. Thanks for watching ePlan Essentials. In today's video, we will talk about the question which was asked already a couple of times on our YouTube channel, and that's how to work with drilling patterns in ePlan. Alright, we are here in our ESS sample project and in today's video we will cover drilling patterns, how to create drilling patterns, how to assign drilling patterns and how to view drilling patterns. We will start with the last thing first and then go to the first. So how to view drilling patterns in ePlan Pro panel. For this we will go on our mounting panel. Take a look from the front and now we will take a look to see how to view drilling patterns. Under view, you can find on the layout space the button drilling view. At this point, the drilling patterns should be visible on your mountable surface, right? So you should see the drilling patterns. Why do we start with this point first is because that's the most trickiest point. What happens if you press drilling view and you cannot see the drilling patterns? If this happens, you don't have the field size defined. Most important rule here in order to make the drilling patterns visible is that the mountable surface have a field size defined. Typically, if you download retail enclosures from the data portal, the field size and all other surfaces are properly defined. If you create enclosures from scratch, then you need to make sure that you define also the field size. That was the first step, how to display the drilling view. The next step is where to assign the drilling pattern. For this, we will go under master data, management, and here, in our parts database, we will click on the parts, mechanics, component, cable ducts. We will select the component, for instance. I will use the same component as I just displayed, the uh, Erital wire duct 8800752. And here is a tab, manufacturing. So under manufacturing, you can assign the drilling patterns to your component. If you only have one drilling pattern assigned, then as soon as you place the component on a drillable surface, the software will automatically assign the drilling pattern. If you have more than one drilling pattern assigned to your component, then as soon as you place the component in Pro Panel, the software will pop up a window and you can select which one of those drilling patterns you would like to assign. In our case, we have only one drilling pattern here, which is called RAT TS 8800752. Now let's come to the last point, how to create the drilling patterns. For this, we will be in our parts management, and here next to parts and accessory list and accessory placement, you can find drilling patterns. So here will all of your drilling patterns be available. And we will now just search for our drilling pattern. You could use also the find functionality here, but I'm just gonna scroll here down until I find RAT TS 8800752. If you would like to create a new drilling pattern, you could simply click here, right mouse click new and then start with the editing of it okay so a drilling pattern consists of properties obviously the most important thing here is the name and the description of the drilling pattern once we have the name and the description defined we can go to cutouts and here we now have the table where we assign the drilling information in the first column we can define the drill type so under the drill types, we can select a couple of 
predefined drill types like drill, fret, rectangular, slotted hole, hexagon, and octagon. If your drill cannot be defined by any of those standards, you could alternatively define a user-defined outline. If you want to know how to create a user-defined outline, please let me know in the comments below. The second column is subtype. Some of the drill types have a subtype. Obviously, a drill or a threaded hole is just a hole and you don't need additional information. But if you would have, for instance, a rectangular cutout, then you could define a subtype like square, chamfered, or rounded. If you use subtypes, then the second and first dimension will help you define how this subtype look like. In case you use the user-defined outline, which I mentioned before, then you can assign the user-defined outline in the third column. Okay, let's go back to drill. And let's talk now about the X and Y position. So the X and Y position is the distance for the first hole from a specific point, and that's the left bottom corner of the wire duct. Or any device which you, which you are placing. The angle is obviously not needed as we have a circle. And the first dimension is the diameter of the cutout. Since we only have a hole, we don't need a second or third dimension. As I mentioned, for subtypes, you could use those. If you would have devices which only have a couple of holes, you could define those holes here with x and y position and then you can have multiple informations like you could have like three or four holes and then you will define the x and y position and the first dimension. If you have a device like a wire duct or a mounting rail which have continuous amount of holes then you will define this with the repetitive space and drill every nth hole. So for this I'm just gonna delete this and explain you this here. So, the repetitive spacing defines the distance between every potential hole, right? Typically, if you use wire ducts um, like this Rital one, then you have a repetitive spacing of 50 millimeters, and then you have drill every nth hole, right? This defines which uh, repetitive spacing you would like to apply to drill the hole, then really. Right, that means in this case, I have a repetitive spacing of 50 and drill every end hole 4. That means in our software, every 200 millimeters, we will have a hole really cut. And lastly, end spacing. End spacing is at the end of the wire duct or mounting rail, a surface where you don't will have a cutout. Right, that means if a cutout would fall in the uh, end spacing area, then the software will select the previous repetitive spacing possibility, right? So that means with repetitive spacing and drill every end hole, you can define how close to the end will be a cutout placed. So this was a simple exercise on how to use drilling patterns in ePlan. As I mentioned, if you want to know more about drilling patterns, like how to create outlines or other methods to create drilling patterns, let me know in the comments below. This wraps up today's ePlan Essentials video. If you find the content beneficial, please make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, and share it in your community. Also, as mentioned, if you want to know more about drilling patterns or any other content in ePlan Pro Panel, let me know in the comments below. Until the next time, Uncle Kruno signed out.